so your final clip there anticipated exactly one, two of the Ted Metzger's questions. Can people with cochlear implants sing? Are, are any of them capable of singing, or are they all a, a, is that all a problem? Pitch perception is really difficult. Now, not, you, you can tell that speech improves after you get a cochlear implant. So they are using the sound information to improve their vocal production. Right. But if the pitch mapping is off to begin with, they're trying to tune to the wrong pitch. And so it's very hard to actually sing in tune. Several members of the community, even though it wasn't directly related to your talk, just want to know, and since you're the right person to ask, I got it. it the use of ear pods and headsets and, and, the, and the use of volume, you know, clearly that's having a, a dramatic impact in the population as a whole. Can you just talk a little bit sure, about it as absolutely. you see it from your vantage point? Yeah. Our, our society and our technology is way too loud. If you go to a rock concert or even a movie, actually if you go to a the movie theater today, you'll find that there are some sequences where your ears are hurting afterwards. If your ears hurt from sound, you're sustaining auditory damage. If you have changes in hearing after a concert where you have a dampening or muffled sound, that's called a temporary threshold shift. That represents injury to the cochlea. If you repeat that over time, that temporary shift becomes permanent. Our, we are clearly too loud. So when we say damage, Charles, there's, what, 20,000 hairs in the ear, if I remember correctly, something like that. So we're actually damaging them, shortening them, destroying they're, they're them? They're destroying stereocilia and hair cells. In and there. they don't grow back. They do not regenerate. So these are the 20,000 hairs that you want to keep. You can lose the yeah. ones in your head. These are the hairs you want to exactly. keep. Exactly. They're right. not coming back. Okay. So how about languages? We had a question um, probably from somebody uh, from Vietnam. How about languages that are pitch dependent, like Vietnamese and right. I believe Chinese? Exactly. So Mandarin. So, so what's going on with cochlear implants in that environment? So. They have a very difficult time with, with auditory cues alone to get inflection. So in a language that's tonally dependent, they find that those actual, so there are some words that you can get in context, right. meaning the, the meaning of the word in the sentence, and you can fill in the blanks. But if you had to just take a test on the pitch basis alone, or telling the difference between uh and uh, it's very difficult. So and Chinese so, is almost all, I mean, the same, the same words, correct. words, so to speak. It, it's all about pitch, right? So up, is, down, up, down. This is a huge issue in, in China where cochlear implants are being done with a high, high frequency, but not a lot of effort. Is that spurring rehab. research in China? You think they'd be Absolutely. pretty motivated. So that, it yeah, is. Good, in that sense, I mean, there should be a lot of research. You know, I didn't mention this. There are about 200,000 people right now that have cochlear implants. There are millions of people that have deafness. So the numbers are only going to grow up. There are going to be more and more individuals that have cochlear implants, and this is going to become an increasingly prevalent problem because speech is happening. These patients get their speech back, and then they turn on the radio and they want to get their music back. So to summarize what I heard you say, and I heard you say it so beautifully too, this is perhaps the only area of medicine where beauty should be the standard of care, that every other area of medicine, we want our function back, we want our process back, but here we want our beauty back. And this is one where it's possible. This is plausible. You know, when it comes to, to losing your vision, the idea of being able to see Van Gogh and making, making it out correctly is really, really far away. In cochlear implant technology, we've come so far, but in a way, we've become very narrow-minded by focusing on, on language. We have to expand our horizon and think really more about these things that were initially considered a dream. No one ever thought at the beginning of cochlear implants that we'd be talking about music. So we get what we measure. If we measure for beauty, maybe we'll get it. Exactly. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you.